Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating cones in Illustrator. So we're going to start here in an any size document, doesn't matter how big your document is. You're going to start with a polygon. So go to the polygon tool, click once in the document and set the number of sides to three, doesn't matter what the radius is, and just click OK. Doesn't matter what the radius is because the radius is a really hard value to estimate even in Illustrator. So I just generally get a triangle down on the screen and then I can just sort of drag it around to get what I want. So I want the fill, but I don't want the stroke here. So with my triangle sort of roughly shaped, I'm going to turn off the stroke. Let me just get a slightly darker fill in case you're having trouble seeing this. So actually, let's just go and darken this color up a little bit. What we need to do to create a cone out of this is to get half of the triangle. The easiest way to do that, or one of the easiest ways to do that, is to select your triangle and choose Object, Path, and then Add Anchor Points. What that does is it adds anchor points to each side of the triangle, and there's an anchor point down here. So if we now go to the Delete Anchor Point tool, we can start deleting the anchor points we don't need, which is the one down here and this one here. Now you could also have created a rectangle and just done a minus front on these two shapes, but it always pays to learn new tricks. So if you're not familiar with the object path add anchor points tool, that can be really helpful in all sorts of situations. So we have our basic shape and it's a triangle. To make it into a cone, we'll choose Effect and then 3D. And we're going to choose Revolve because we want to rotate this around the left hand side here, revolve it around to create a cone. So Effect, 3D, Revolve. We'll turn the preview on because that lets us see what we're doing. And straight off the bat, we've got exactly what we came here to create. We've got a conical shape. Now, we've at the moment got the position as off axis front, but you can change the position. So if you want to do isometric shapes, for example, or off axis left or whatever, then you can get different looks to your cone depending on which of these options you choose. But I'm going to settle for off axis front. Now, if the triangle had gone the other way and you saw something like this when you chose to select the preview, then the reason for this is that you're rotating from the right edge here, which is this angle here, and not the left edge. So if you see something that you think shouldn't be what you're seeing, always try and flip this to the opposite edge because the difference is significant. Now the shading we're seeing here is plastic shading. So let me just drop this down so you can see what the other options are. In fact, let's click on more options first. So the light is coming here because that's where the light source is here on this little map, if you like. If we want the light source to be down here, then we're going to move it into position. So we're going to light this side of the cone rather than the other side. You can add additional lights too. So if you click here on new light, you'll add a second light. And so you can light this cone from all different faces. And if you want to, with a light selected, you can dial down its intensity. So it gives a little bit of light, but not a whole lot of light. So there are all sorts of things that you can do with this lighting feature here in Illustrator for your cone. I'm just going to click OK. Now, if that's all you want, you're off and away. But be careful that you don't do things like rotating this shape, because when you rotate a cone, it's not actually a cone. What it is is a triangle with a 3D revolve applied to it. And in trying to rotate it, what you're doing is breaking the look of the shape. So if you really do want to rotate it, this is what you're going to do. With it selected, you're going to choose Object and then Expand Appearance. And that turns it from a triangle with an effect applied to it to an actual complex grouped shape. And the grouped shape contains all the little elements that go together to make the cone. So let's just go over here and let's have a look and see what it looks like. There are heaps and heaps of groups here, but you will see that there are a couple of particular elements of interest. There's the front part of the shape here. I'm just going to turn that off. That's the front panel here, and there's a matching back panel over here. 
this is the bottom of the shape. Now, if we were taking the shape as it looks here, we don't actually need this piece here, the piece in underneath there, because we're actually not looking at it. So I'm going to trash that because we don't need it. I do need this front face, so that's the piece I do want, but I don't need this piece because it's around the back of the shape, and so I'm going to toss that as well. So there is my front piece. I need this piece here because it nestles into here, but I don't need this piece with its bottom that's arched away because, again, it's from the back of the shape. What happens when you create a shape like this in Illustrator when you expand it, Illustrator gives you not only the front rendering of the shape, but also what there is on the behind. And when you've expanded it, you don't need the behind because you're just never going to see it. Check this element here to see if you need it or not. It's over here in the shape, but I'm actually not seeing it. So when I turn it on and off, nothing's happening. So I'm going to trash it as well. And that leaves me with this piece here and this piece here. And I can actually pull them out of here. Now again, they're both in groups, but they're in groups because they're different elements. Each one of these is an element around the shape and it is filled with a different color because we had that shading on it. So there's a group for the bottom part of the shape and here's a group for the top part of the shape. So if we're putting the shape back together pretty much as it would have looked, that's what it's going to look like. So let's get rid of all the rest of this garbage. When you're making cones like this and if you're perhaps giving them away or creating them as stock, for example, you will want to clean up your layers palette because you do not want it to look like it did when we expanded this shape. So let's have a look at another thing that we can do with cones. I'm going to the rectangle tool. I'm just going to drag out a long, narrow rectangle here. Now it's got a sort of pink color associated with it. Let's go and get a slightly darker color. Now I'm going to make a few of these, so I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. I find this a nice tool to use when you want to sort of look and see what's happening as you go. Let's make 15 copies of this, which is an original plus 15 copies, making 16 in all. And let's start moving them away from the original shape. So I think that looks pretty good actually. Let me just wind down the vertical movement. I'm actually going to change the dimensions of this shape in a minute. I'm going to smush it up a little bit. So let me just click OK. And let's go in and make this a little bit thinner. I like that better. OK, now we'll expand it with Object Expand Appearance. It's really critical that you do that because you can't make a successful symbol out of an unexpanded object, an object that has a transformation applied to it. So now we've got those shapes, let's go to the Symbol panel. Of course, you can get to that by choosing Window and then Symbols. Click New and that will be added as a new symbol. I'm just calling mine Stripes. Don't need to make changes to any of these settings, movie clip or graphic, doesn't matter. It's all applied the same way, so just click OK. So we now have a symbol of this set of lines. So if I go into the Symbols panel, which I have just lost, let me go and get my Symbols panel back again. You'll see that we have those stripes as a symbol. So let's get rid of the stripes themselves and let's go and create yet another one of these cones. This time let's do it just with the pen tool. I'm going to click once, Hold down the shift key, click twice to create that vertical line. Hold the shift key to create a perfectly horizontal line. And let's just click back where we came from. And this triangle is all we need to create this sort of a cone. Again, Effect 3D Revolve. Turn on Preview and check to see that we've got what it is that we came here for. I'm going to use Off Axis Front again. Now this time I'm going to Map Art. Because what we can do with a cone like this is we can apply the pattern that we just had to it. Now, you won't always get the result that I've got here. I've only got two faces here. That's a real bonus because usually you'll end up with three faces. You remember when we, let me just get out of here and explain what's happening here. Remember when we created this cone here, we had a top part of the cone and a bottom half of the cone. So that cone, if we tried to map things onto it, would be in two pieces. There'd be a top part of the cone and a bottom part. 
With this shape, we've only got one plane. So when we're creating that as a revolved object, the whole of the object can have a single design map to it. So let's go back, Effect 3D, Revolve, Turn Preview on, go to Map Art and check. And you see we've got just these two surfaces. So we're going to the surface that looks most like the outside of this cone, which is this surface here. Obviously, this surface is the circle at the bottom of the cone. Well, we're going to the one that we have here. Let's go to Symbol and let's select Stripes. I'll click Scale to Fit, and the stripes have now been applied to the cone, and they've been wrapped around the cone. Now you can do other things with this dialog. One of the things you might want to do is just make it larger, because that makes life just a little bit easier sometimes. So here I'm going to enlarge this shape here. So I'm going to hold the Shift key as I enlarge my stripes. Now this can get a little bit difficult to do. Sometimes the easiest thing is to move these stripes out of the way and then enlarge them where you can actually see them. And what I'm going to do is rotate this. So I'm looking for the rotation icon here. And when I rotate it, the stripes are now going to wrap around the cone. And the more I rotate it, the more they're going to wrap. I just need to make sure, and this is can get just a little bit fiddly getting it rotated. Sometimes you might have to rotate it even if it's falling off the edge of the shape and then just move it into position. So I said it's just a little bit fiddly. But the angle is wrapping these stripes around the cone. So we get that sort of really interesting effect. Now the color of the cone initially is creating the color underneath the stripes. The stripes are just flat color with a little bit of shading on them. The underlying color is coming from the triangle itself. Let me click OK and then OK. And so here we have our cone again. We won't want to rotate it or we're going to break everything, but we can change the color of the underlying triangle. Let me just go to the appearance panel and you'll see that this is still fundamentally a filled triangle that has a 3D revolve with a mapping on it, mapping the symbol to the surface of the cone. So if I change the fill here, we're going to change the underlying color. So I might go for a sort of yellowy color or I could go for a blue color. Actually, that bluey color looks really nice. Maybe a blue gray might look even better. So that color of the triangle is providing the underlying coloring of the surface of the object. And this is the pattern of stripes that we added as a symbol. So there we have a second cone and this one has a pattern map to it. If we want to be able to rotate it, for example, then we're going to select it, choose object, expand appearance. We know we're going to see a right royal mess here in the layers palette, but we're going to the group here. We're just going to open everything up and see what it is we've got. Well, this is the back of the cone here. This is the front. So let's just trash the back of the cone because we don't need it. We don't need the inside circle of the cone because we can't even see it. So get rid of that. Check this piece to see if you can even see it. So it appears to be along the edge of the cone. I'm just going to turn it off and on again. It's really not visible at all, so I'm going to get rid of that. So that leaves me with a single clipping group, which is the stripes, and then the actual shaded surface itself and a clipping path. So I'm going to leave this clipping group together, but it doesn't have to be inside a group, inside a group. I can just pull it up to the top here. And so it is going to look like a single cone shape, because in this case, we only had one surface to map to. With this one, we ended up with two surfaces to map to. Now we can go and rotate this cone because it is just a shape. It doesn't have an effect applied to it, so it can be rotated and it can also be duplicated and resized. You can do anything with that at this point, holding the shift key obviously to resize it in proportion. So that's how you create cones in Illustrator. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned things about Illustrator and 3D in particular that you were unfamiliar with. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley and thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.